Hey guys, in this video I'd like to go over uh, systems of equations and the three different types of equations you're going to see and uh, and what characteristics to look out for. So the first being uh, the most common, which is called one solution. And in a one solution equation, it's when two lines are graphed and they intersect once. The solution will occur where they intersect. So right there is the solution to this system of equations. This point happens to occur at the location 5, 7. So we would say the solution to this system occurs at the point 5, 7. Now that's a separate skill. Right now, as you get introduced into this, a separate thing is to be able to just determine how many solutions there are. Is there going to be one, no solution, or infinite solutions? And a goal of mine for you is that you can be able to tell these by looking at the graph, but then also like if you like cover the graph up and you just looked at the equations. So clearly looking at the graph, these things intersect once and there's the intersection point. But what would we need to look for if you the graph wasn't there and you just needed to look at the equations? So I have these like cheat sheets down below that I want you guys to kind of copy and I'll, I'll include the link in the description. It says uh, what to look for. So you want to look for different slopes, usually different y-intercepts, but if the y-intercept is the same, that's where they'll intersect. So here's an example I have. These, these example doesn't match what's up in the graph, but the purple equation I have is y equals 3x plus 4, y equals negative 2x plus 8. I don't need to go any further. I know that these things have different slopes. I can immediately tell that they're going to have one solution. Um, and I think that'll be more clear when you see the other examples. Okay, the next example is, an, is no solutions, and this is pretty intuitive. If a solution occurs when the lines intersect, then there will be no solution if the lines never intersect, and the lines will never intersect if they're parallel. So this graph is an example of no solutions, but from an equation standpoint, we need to look down below at these characteristics. What you should look out for, the same slope, but different y-intercepts. So when you first learned about linear equations, you learned the slope was the rate of change and the y-intercept was the starting point. So try to think of like running a race. If you and a friend were running at the same rate, but your friend got a head start and you had to start behind them, you would never catch your friend if you're running at the same rate. And that's kind of what's happening here in these linear equations is that they're, they're traveling at the same rate. In the graph, they're both going down, but the red line starts at 1.5 and the blue line starts at 6.2 or so. So they're both decreasing in the same amount, but the blue line will always be greater than the red line. Always. So in looking at what that looks like in the equations, you're looking to find if they have the same slope, which in this case, they have the same slope of seven, but different starting points, that means they will never catch, they will never intersect, and therefore will have no solutions. Okay, the one that's probably a little bit more difficult to comprehend uh, from a conceptual standpoint, but um, but from a graphing standpoint, like maybe the easiest, uh, infinite solutions is ones that, actually, let's go back to the beginning. If, if one solution is where the lines intersect and no an equation that has no solutions means they'll never intersect, well, lines that intersect over their entire length means that they would have infinite solutions. They're they're intersecting a ton, like the whole length of the line, an infinite amount of times. So from a graph, that kind of makes sense because you can just picture a line on top of another line. It's infinite intersection points. But from an equation standpoint, uh, what you're looking out for is same slope, same y-intercept, essentially the exact same equation. Now, this note I have here is that it may look different at first, but try simplifying. And I really should have added this in for all of the others because every example that I gave, I put the equations in slope intercept form, which is the form you're probably most comfortable in, but there are other forms of linear equations. And one of them is this, it's standard form. And at first glance, like most students would say, okay, well, this has a slope of two and this is a slope of negative four, so they're not the same. I bet these things have one solution. But you gotta be careful. You can't compare them in this format. This equation should be put in slope-intercept form. So what I did here is I first began adding 4x to both sides. I canceled it out on the left and put it over here on the right. And then I didn't show it, but I divided both sides by two. 
So dividing this side by two, turn the y, the two y into y, and then the right side, if everything was divided by two, it would turn into four plus two x. And I just took the liberty of switching them around using commutative property so that it was in slope intercept form. But now that they're both in slope intercept form, you can see it's the exact same equation. Now, that idea should apply, like I said, to all of the other scenarios that if you're looking for same slope, but one of them's in slope intercept and the other's in standard form, you should convert them so they're both in slope intercept. And then that way you'll have a better idea for how many solutions they'll have. So again, I'm gonna have this, this cheat sheet kind of provided for you, it's an easy reference. But what I'd like to do is kind of show you on Desmos um, how this kind of works. So Desmos is a graphing calculator app, I'm not sure if you've seen it before, but um, this clearly, these lines, based on the last slide, says that they'll have one solution. And if I kind of like peel back the curtain here, the red and the blue line have different slopes. It has the blue is a slope of, or the red is a slope of four, and the blue is a slope of negative two. And because they had different slopes, they intersected right there. Um, let me come up with another scenario here. Let's say I, I block off the red line and I, and I click on this one. This purple line, you can see that these run parallel to each other. But from a characteristic standpoint, this purple line has a slope of negative two and the blue line has a slope of negative two. They have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. So because they start at different points, they'll never intersect. So if we weren't looking, let's say we didn't look at the equations, we couldn't see anything. If we just looked at the equations, I could tell this one and this one would have no solutions because they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Okay, let's do one final example here. If I have this blue line and I look at this line, and I'm, before I click anything, at first glance, they look entirely different. And my first instinct would be one solution. But the error that I'm making is the fact that this one is in slope intercept and this is not. And if I compare them in this way, it's a, I'm not going to be able to compare them fairly. So what I should do is I should convert it to y inter slope intercept form. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to click the, the color to show you. Those are the same line. Uh, notice the green line is right over top of the blue line. These lines here, blue and green, would have infinite number of solutions. And again, you might not notice this because one is in one format and the other is in another. So my recommendation to you would be to put it in slope intercept form so that you can compare them more easily. And that's the, the big idea for this video is that the fact that there are three different outcomes with systems of equations. It's either one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. And um, your goal is to be able to identify these by looking at the characteristics of the equation. I hope that you understand it from a graphing standpoint. The goal of this video is to be able to look at an equation and be able to tell how many solutions it has. So I hope this video helps you out uh, and uh, good luck.